All right, good morning, everybody. Pastor Scott here, and I want to say thanks for joining us online for our worship gathering today. Uh, we'll be back online again next week is because we canceled services for at least two weeks uh, in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, and so uh, please stay safe. And if you have any needs, let us know. Uh, I'm sure everybody is kind of dealing with uh, kind of some upheaval with routines and uh, what's normal right now. I uh, want to let you know that your pastors, we're still working. So if you want to get a hold of us, by all means, please reach out to us. We're still monitoring the church phone, church email. Um, if you just need somebody to talk to, by all means, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, there's a lot going on, and uh, we care about you guys and want you to be uh, doing well and to know that you're cared about and uh, and that you have somebody that's available. So um, also, uh, if you know anybody here in the church that may not be on social media, but you happen to have their number, let me encourage you to reach out to people, reach out to each other if you're a part of the Grove family. Uh, it means a lot when somebody checks in on you, uh, even if it's real brief, it, it just is meaningful to know that you're connected to people at a time where you're socially, you know, um, separating and isolating from each other. Um, a couple of uh, other announcements to let you know. One is uh, our church website, discoverthegrove.com. Uh, there's a couple of questions that have come up over the course of the week, and so I'll answer both of those here with the church website, discoverthegrove.com. One is people have asked, hey, um, when us not meeting, what about our ties? What, what if we want to give money to support the church? Uh, there is a give button in the upper right-hand corner of the church website. Uh, that is safe, secure. That's an easy way to do it, uh, and that makes it easy for us. You can always mail something in. Uh, it just may take a little longer for it to be deposited with everything going on right now. Um, also, for announcements, things that are going on in the church, um, any kind of breaking update, uh, just checking in, a lot of that type of stuff, that's going to originate from our church website, and then it will be distributed to social media because not everyone is on Facebook or Instagram or anything else like that. Uh, and so we want to make sure that there is one common place that everybody knows they can look. And so that's going to be our church website uh, on, under the resource tab on the Grove blog. That's where you'll get all kinds of information. So uh, I do want to let you guys know about something else that one of the things that we're going to be doing in the coming weeks as we try to stay connected with each other is we're going to be bringing in and uh, implementing kind of some of these Zoom conference call meetings. It's kind of like the Brady Bunch with video interaction and stuff, you know. Um, but uh, what will happen is uh, we had our first Zoom conference call on Friday night about 6 o'clock. We had about 25 people that got together. Uh, we broke out into smaller little rooms with smaller numbers of people. We shared some prayer requests, things that have been encouraging, and just stayed connected with each other. Now, I think that's going to be something that's really important for us as the church when we can't gather for worship that we still know that we're not alone. Uh, and so uh, we'll be offering some of these types of Zoom meetings throughout the course of the week. Um, and the next Zoom meeting is going to be at the conclusion of our worship gathering today. Uh, I'll be hosting a Zoom breakout um, where we'll be able to kind of connect with each other, but also talk a little bit about what uh, Pastor Jeremy is going to be discussing in his message today. And so if you guys have any needs or any questions, um, the website is the first place to look, um, but you can always reach out to us. But I, I, will, I will probably point people back to the website. Uh, to get that first line of information with what's going on, okay? Um, with that in mind, uh, let's turn our attention and our focus towards our time of worship. Pastor Mike has put together some videos uh, that would be some of our songs uh, so that we can kind of begin refocusing our hearts and our minds in towards uh, what Pastor Jeremy is going to share from our series, Better Than Okay, in First Thessalonians. And so I'm really looking forward to uh, our time together today and what Jeremy has to share uh, I really do think that uh, it's an incredibly timely message for us, and I'm looking forward to talking with you all about it after the service uh, it concludes uh, in our Zoom breakout. And the links to that will be in the comments for this video, uh, or for the live stream, and then we'll uh, we'll kind of go from there. But let me let me pray as we turn our attention back towards um, this time of worship. Okay, Father, I thank you so much for your faithfulness and your love. Lord, in the midst of everything that's going on right now with uh, people concerned about uh, their safety or the safety of people that they love, I pray, Lord, that you would allow those of us that uh, are a part of this church family and even the guests that are here, Lord, I would pray that we would know your peace, um, that we would uh, sense your protection and your peace in the midst of everything that's going on. Lord, I would pray that 
uh, that we would have your eyes to see what you would see in our community, that we would have your ears to hear the needs that are around us, and that we would have um, love that you have for people. Lord, I thank you for Jesus that makes that possible. And Lord, I'd ask that as we um, go about our days um, in these coming weeks, that we would make wise choices, that we would make loving choices, uh, and Lord, that we would make choices that ultimately honor you. And so I thank you and I pray that our time together today would draw us closer to you, that it would cause us to worship you um, in new ways. And I thank you uh, for your love. I thank you for Jesus uh, that makes all of this possible. And we pray these things in his name. Amen. All right, I'll see you guys in a little bit uh, when we go into the Zoom breakout. All right, see you soon. Bye. Clears the way Wait till his time 
thing I try to find To calm his shaking heart Weighs me down, makes me a slave But you have called me a child And everything I try to find To calm his shaking heart Weighs me down, makes me a slave But you have called me a child Welcome to the Grove Church. My name is Jeremy, and I'm one of the pastors here. And I'm really glad that you've joined us today. Today's message is going to remind us of what it looks like to have a healthy Christian community and to live lovingly towards each other. Now more than ever, we have to listen to God's word and not feed into the fear of uncertainty and confusion. And as Christians, we need to take a step back and remember where our hope lies, that God is our constant, and He is in control. And if we do feed into the fears, we have to remember that our faith will struggle. We're all in uncharted territory. What we are seeing is a sense of uncertainty that is just under the surface, and that it only takes one little thing to turn everything upside down. Unfortunately, we are also seeing firsthand how fragile in the, everything in this world really is, and how quickly it can turn. But we can't be discouraged. We have to be prepared for whatever comes. And in Matthew 24, 44, Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The reality is that we are living in a world, for the most part, doesn't know what hope in Jesus means. Here at The Grove, we have always encouraged and fostered community, family, and the pursuit of Jesus in all aspects of our lives. The foundation of church family is not found in a building. It's found in the relationships that we build. We cannot build community in crisis, but what we can do is rely on the relationships we have built with each other in community. These relationships help us get through a crisis when one comes our way. As Christians, we have to take a look at what is going on around us and remember that we need to be a people that love each other well and carry a great sense of calmness, patience, wisdom, despite the fear. We should be the ones to lead by example and be the ones that shed light on the purpose to those around us. Now is the time for those opportunities and for us to live out our faith amongst our friends, family, church, and our neighborhoods and show others that we do care for each other and them. After all, aren't we the ones that have hope in something way more stable than what this world could ever give? In 1 Thessalonians 5, 14-15, Paul writes, Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy, encourage those who are timid, take tender care of those who are weak, be patient with everyone, See that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. 
These words and the whole book of Thessalonians was written by Paul to focus on Christ's return and to assure us that we need to be diligent in our growth and maturity in Christ. It also shows how a Christian ought to be living so that we can please God and provide hope in the midst of suffering or uncertainty. No matter what your perspective is during this time, it's time to love your neighbors. This is such an important lesson to learn from this passage. And scripture reinforces the truth that we need to learn and lean on and love each other well by building relationships that matter. So how can we do that? Paul starts this passage with brothers and sisters. This is an all-inclusive phrase. It is not just leaders or congregation. He is addressing the church as a whole. He also uses the word urge, which comes from the Latin term pericaleo, which means to come alongside, counsel or comfort, which carries the idea of providing help to. He is teaching the church in Thessalonica about unity and fellowship. He is teaching them about building relationships And he wants them to recognize that as members of the family of God, that we have to come together to keep growing and maturing and practicing the ways of Jesus, just as we do today. We cannot have a lack of unity, counsel, wisdom, or discipline in the church. If we do, that will let sin creep in. There is something really rich about coming together in community to be able to share in the mutual life and ministry of each other. We are all entrusted with the responsibility to minister to each other, like reaching out to the hurting, the sick, the weak, and encouraging the timid and lazy too. Do in the times of crisis with sensitivity and love, just as Jesus did. And we have to do the same. Sometimes sensitivity and love may not always look sensitive or feel that way, but our maturity in Christ and the strength of our relationships comes from being able to come alongside each other. In last week's message, Mike said something that was very true. As pastors, we have to lead by example, but it is very hard to lead where we haven't been before. God has given leadership wisdom to lead, but that is not saying that leadership has all the answers or all the right answers. All this means is that we are collectively stronger than if we were apart. And in many cases, each of us in the church can use different experiences in our lives to help encourage one another and put it into practice. Paul goes on to the next part of the passage and points out that we should be practicing fellowship and unity and not disunity. We should be watching out for each other in a way that we do not act like the world. Paul once again encourages us not only to look out for each other, but he calls us to do good to each other. This is reiterated all throughout scripture, but Paul says it very clear in Galatians 6.10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. He is telling us that we not only have to learn about Christ and his ways, but but he is telling us to live out what we believe. Doing good means to sow the Spirit. It means to take the time to care for each other. We can have profound effects on each other and their lives. We can be the encouragement in someone's life that can change the trajectory of their life. We can help them mature in their faith and build up their relationship that could be so important in future times of need. I am sure that if you have been around the Grove for a while, you have seen it. I know I have. We have to remember to place our hope not in the world around us, but in Jesus. We have to learn to recognize when people are in need or in trouble and come together and to their aid. The world is concerned about what is going on is a place where we can apply our values. We can not only show love, but we can treat others well and start to build relationships that matter we can put our love into action. So what does it look like to have a healthy Christian community 
and live lovingly towards each other. First, the church has to be a place where people on the outside feel comfortable coming to seek help and find the hope that we have found. We have to be a place where the fears can be subdued and other in our hearts can find comfort. The weak can find strength. The church is not a place where we condemn or condone or turn people away, but we take action to love each other and unburden each other of our sins. Secondly, we have to be actively working on ourselves to be more like Christ. The church is not a building. It is a family. It is people who we can trust when we need it most. It is people who have the heart of Christ and are willing to serve each other. Thirdly, we have to watch out for others. Too many times the church does not cast a good light on itself. It does not show characteristics of love and sensitivity. This allows the enemy to so cleverly bring deception into our lives and our churches and our perspectives that we become okay with sin amongst ourselves. The blatant prevalence of this is seen in our culture and within our church, to where we have forgotten that it is okay to help each other out, that it's okay to tend to someone's needs or weaknesses. It's okay to, to not feel like you can do everything on your own. It is okay to feel weak and to seek the help you need. It is okay to feel all these things because we know where our hope lies. It is all about serving, whether by extending love and acceptance, offering to cook for someone, drive a friend to an appointment, or offering to babysit their kids. And it's also teaching children or discipling those younger in faith, or meeting with someone to provide accountability and encouragement. All of these things are just a few examples, but these bring a sense of purpose and fulfillment to our lives. Knowing that God has a role for each believer to play in the lives of others gives meaningful direction. We have to remember who we need to look to. Jesus led by example. He spent his time healing people and teaching them. We have to be ready to serve one another when we, they need it most. We have to be ready to help each other bear the burdens we have. We have to be able to speak truth to each other in love. That is the responsibility of the church, and that is what Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica. Not because they were not showing these characteristics to each other. It is because they were showing the characteristics to each other. And then Paul wanted them to just keep it up because they were doing the right thing. It was encouragement to them just as we should be doing to each other. In time of need is when we need the help the most. In Acts, the first church was taught by God to be more diligent in dealing with sin and directly ministering to people within the church in a way that was loving, patient, and truthful. They were ensuring the health of the spiritual aspect of the church, keeping it maturing in their faith, and in turn, the church was able to keep reaching the lost without getting lost themselves. The value in having a church family is not in a building or other things that we do. It is the church family's ability to help each other bear lighter burdens, learn truth that equips, and have help to overcome sin. There is value in having the opportunity to give, each other, give to each other in these areas. And all truth exists to make God known and loved. In this passage, Paul called them to grow in their holiness, in love and maturity. We are called to do the same. We need to remember that even though we are apart right now, or for the time being, we need to keep building up our relationships, take the time to put our love towards each other into action, like praying for each other, in the church family, and those who may come to know Christ through these unfolding and uncertain times. We need to be the ones that watch out for each other and tend to each other's needs. We need to be the ones reaching out to each other, even though we cannot gather at this time. Everything is for a purpose. God has control of the situation. 
we have to not lose sight that despite all the suffering, discouragement, and confusion, he is here with us. We have to trust that he will, his will be done. And we have to do our part and trust that we can be the church that he wants us to be. By showing people around us that we care for them and their souls. Pastors and church families alike are the ones who should be leading in unity and fellowship. And we should be expressing the characteristics of Jesus and helping to disciple others through their anxiety, fear, and questions. Be diligently paying attention to the relationships that we can foster and build up and be practicing our values and showing the characteristics of our faith to others in our church, family, and our neighborhoods. If you have been a part of our series, Better Than Okay, and haven't had the time to read through the book of Thessalonians yet, I would encourage you to do so. This is a great week to read through it. Apply it to your life and see what God does in your life. If you have any questions or a need, please reach out to us at the church or on social media. We're available if you should need anything. Also, don't be afraid to reach out to each other and stay connected in different ways. It is really important to the health of the church community to be serving and encouraging one another, even though we're not gathering. John MacArthur once said, A healthy flock is characterized by growth in faith, love, and purity, and progress towards the likeness of Christ. I'd like us to be safe out there, take precautions, but don't live in fear and serve and encourage one another in love. And remember that these events are not what defines us and who we are. It only gives us the opportunity to show God's love to each other and the people who need to know who God is. God bless and take care and remember that the pastors at the Grove are here and will be praying for you. See